Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome back. The last video I made, I was talking about policy-based routing on PFSense using the client IP. So basically what we're doing is we're looking at the client IP in our internal network and then based on the policy-based routing rules, we are routing that traffic through one of the WAN interfaces you have. It can also be a VPN interface, treating that as a WAN interface. You can check that video out. I will leave a link to that video in the comment section. Like I promised in that video, I will show you how to do policy-based routing based on destination. So it doesn't matter what client IP you have internally. If you're going to a specific dest destination, like a network or a URL or a FQDN, I will show you how to set up in PFSense rules which will guide that traffic through a specific WAN interface or a specific VPN interface. Let's get into it. This is the official NetGate article explaining how aliases work in PFSense. I would uh, say go to the document because you need to have a good understanding how an alias works in PFSense because this is the option, one of the options we are going to use to create a list of URLs, FQDNs or host names. That's my destination list. And then I'm going to specify, create a specific policy-based routing rule, which is leveraging this alias, of course. So I would say I will leave the link to this article in the description below. Check it out, uh, read through it so you have a better understanding how aliases work in PFSense. Let's go to my demo PFSense firewall. This is running already. PF blocker ng. This is very important for this to work because I'm going to create aliases based on the functionality we have in PF blocker ng. So I'm not going through the PF blocker ng configuration in this video. I have on my website blogs and videos explaining how PF blocker ng works and how to set it up and configure it. So check the links I will leave in the description to configure and set that up. For this video, just make sure that you have PF blocker ng installed on PFSense. So when you go to the system package manager, it should be installed and it should already be been set up and working. So when I click on the firewall option in the menu on top and I click on PF blocker ng, make sure this is enabled because, because if it's not enabled, it's not going to create those aliases. So make sure it's enabled, then click on save. So we know that everything is uh, from the PF blocker ng package is running. And then the option we are going to create, we are going to need from PF blocker ng is base is sitting in that IP tab because what we're going to tell PFSense is PFSense is create an alias and in that alias we are going to specify domain names like cnn.com or netflix.com or facebook.com or you name it and based on that domain name we want pf blocker ng to pull down the ip addresses connected to that domain name and then in the pf in the policy based routing rule we are using that alias to direct the traffic to those domains using a specific wan interface that's basically what we're going to do now how do we do that in pf blocker ng we have to create that alias now that alias can be created clicking on the ip tab and ipv4 tab of course i already have set up a alias uh, rule or a alias feed here um, you can just create a new one by clicking on add specify a name a description and as you can see here i already have spe specified some domain names here that means if I use this alias, this is the name of the alias I'm creating with PF blocker ng. If I'm using this alias, I can now set up a policy based routing rule and say that if the destination is name of that alias, in this case is the PFBL URLs alias, then route it through a specific gateway, a specific WAN interface or that VPN interface from Malvet, which I'm still running on my PFSense. And then you have to give it the list of URLs or networks or host names, which are going to be part of that alias. In this way, you don't have to create a additional rule for every URL or website you are trying to route the traffic to through a specific gateway. As you can see here, I have added the dnsleaktest.com website just for testing purposes, of course. And the option I'm using is the whois. Because what will happen is if I create this alias within PF blocker ng and I click on the update, what PF blocker ng will do, it will go through a DNS lookup and 
grab the IP addresses which are pointing to these host names because we need IP addresses in those policy based uh, routing policy based routing rules for pfSense. That's the way pfSense works. It's not, it's not going to look at URLs or host names. It's looking at a list of IP addresses. How do we generate that list of IP addresses? Well, we create an alias using pfBlockerNG because pfBlockerNG is giving me the option to pull down the IP addresses which are pointing to those domain names. So basically you can fill up this alias with every domain name, every destination domain name you want. Um, I'm doing the who is option. You, see, you can see if you click on the drop down menu, there are a lot of options there. Even the ASN one, because the ASN is pointing to specific networks which have a specific number on the internet and they are connected mostly to large companies like Netflix or Facebook. They have their own ASN numbers. If you click on the ASN option, you can just specify the ASN number here in the list and then it uh, PFs blocker or PFSense will pull down the IP ranges which are connected to that ASN and then it will basically have a list of IP addresses which will uh, which you can then uh, utilize use to set up that specific rule. So I'm doing the who is one. So I have specified um, the FQDNs, the destinations which I want to route the traffic through my Malvet VPN. If I go very quickly to my testing machine, you can see this is the test machine I'm running. If I refresh this, this test machine is going out on the WAN interface of my PFSense firewall. This is the WAN interface, this is the demo lab I'm using, and this is the WAN interface, the WAN IP address, which is basically coming from my PFSense router because this machine is sitting behind my PFSense router. Now, I have created my PF blocker alias here. Select the, the action to alias match. Set up the update frequency because a lot of FQDNs nowadays, they are changing IP addresses uh, very frequently or they are using CDNs. Well, you can set up the uh, update frequency and this is the, uh, the frequency which PFSense will use to update this alias. And every time there is a new IP connected or pointing to one of the domains I specified here, it will update that, uh, that list. And, uh, and that way you won't have to do it manually. So set up the update frequency. Um, enable logging, of course, uh, the state removal is kill states or not. That means if something changes in that in this list and there is a state from an internal client IP in, in, from your internal network to the destination, it will immediately kill the state if there is a state and you remove something. If you have set it up, click on save. Let's go to update. And click on the update. And what it will do, it will update the configuration. Just to be sure, I, I will tell it to reload everything. And if I say do the reload, it will basically go out, do the whois lookup for all those domain names I have configured in that alias. All right, after the update uh, task from pfBlockerNG, it's now time to create our policy-based routing rules because we now have that alias with a destination URL sitting in there which have been converted to IP addresses. Now we can just use it in a rule. If I go to the firewall option, if I go to rules and select my LAN interface, this is the interface uh, where all my local clients are. As you can see here, I have two rules here. The, this rule is from the video I did previously, um, which was uh, policy-based routing based on client IP. I have created a second rule. This rule, I have disabled it because I don't need it anymore. The second rule, this is the important one. I will enable it and then I will show you what I have configured in here because this is the rule which is, which is doing the policy-based routing, leveraging that alias I just created in pfBlockerNG. As you can see here, if I hover with my mouse over the alias, this is the name of that alias I created using pfBlockerNG just now. And then uh, I can see that it contains IP addresses and those IP addresses are the IP addresses which corresponds, which are pointing to the domain names I have set up in this URL alias, right? So if I edit the rule, you can see here the action, it's passed, of course, uh, the interface, I'm using the LAN interface because this rule is deployed for all the clients in my LAN. 
It's running on the LAN interface. That means that any client in that interface, when they are trying to reach a specific domain name, and I know that a domain name, in this case, the ipchicken.com or that dnsleaktest.com, those are sitting in this alias. And again, this is the destination. It's very important because we are doing policy-based routing for destinations, not for sources. For the source, it doesn't matter. The destination one is important. So I'm using that alias because that's the list I have where I define the destination URLs. I want to be routed through my Malvet VPN, not through my main WAN VPN. So I say the destination is an address or alias. Again, if you type, you start typing within pfSense, it will just pf. You can see it will just present you with the aliases it knows. So select the correct one. I will select the one which contains my FQDNs, the domain names. Go down here, scroll down to the bottom. And the, the important part, this part is just the same for policy-based routing based on client IP, based on source IP, because you have to route the traffic to a, through a specific gateway. In this case, I'm using the Mulvet gateway and clicking on save. Now I can click on apply changes. So the rule from my firewall side is done. Now the second part of a policy-based routing rule is the net side. So I'm going to firewall, clicking on net, going to outbound. And as you can see here, this is the rule I used for the policy-based routing based on client IP, based on source IP. I created an additional one, which I'm using for this setup. And this is doing policy-based routing based on destination. So I have to let me enable this rule. This is the rule you have to create as well in your net configuration. As you can see here, let's click on edit. Now this rule is running for the Malvet interface because this is the interface I will be using to route requests which are going to the DNS or the FQDNs or the domain names which are living in this alias list. This is the alias list again, which I created from pfblockerng. As you can see here, the source is any. Destination, this is the destination I want the traffic to be routed through the Malvet interface. That's why I'm using the Malvet interface here. So select that alias. This is the destination. Again, not the source, but the destination. So I'm using the alias list here as a destination. And if you have done that, you can give it a name, of course, and click on save. Click on apply. So now I have set up the forward and the reverse rule set within pfSense. If I go back to my workstation, I can see here that this is the IP address, which is connected to the WAN interface from my pfSense router. And if I hit a refresh here, because this is the domain name I have specified in my uh, in my alias list from pfblockerng. So if I hit refresh now, it should be routing the traffic to dnsleak.com using my Malvet interface. And this is the Malvet IP address. All right, now we know that if I'm visiting the dnsleaktest.com, it's using my Malvet interface. We can also check and see that on the pfSense side, because if I go back to the pfSense firewall, if I click on firewall, go to rules, go to the LAN, you will see that there are states created here. If I click on this, you can see here what's it, what it is doing. It's creating states for a specific destination using that um, alias list because this is the, this is the IP address for dnsleaktest.com and it's going through this rule. That's the way to check if there is actually something uh, hitting that rule. If I go back to firewall and rules, you can go back to the LAN rule and you will see here that there are states created. There is traffic flowing. And of course, you know that this is the exit IP address of your mobile app, of your VPN interface, your second WAN interface or your other gateway you want to use in order to route this traffic through that. Just for testing purposes, this is the DNS leak test.com request I'm doing, it's recognizing that, it's hitting those policy-based routing rules and saying that destination for the dnsleaktest.com should be the Malvet interface, so it's routing the traffic there. If I go to Google, 
in another tab and just open and just ask it what is my IP address. And let's just click here. What's my IP? You can see that if I'm going to another website, this is the whatismyip.com website, it's still using the IP address of my WAN interface because this is not in the list of that alias. This is still being routed through my WAN interface. This is being routed to my VPN interface because it is part of that alias list. And there you have it. That's how you do policy-based routing based on the destination in PFSense. There are other ways to set it up in PFSense as well. I find that using pfblockerng and using all those options there are in pfblockerng, it's very easy to set up that alias list and then add or remove domains or networks or destination FQDN hosts and be able to use that alias in a policy-based routing rule and then set it up as a dest destination. Well, it's very easy and very simple to do policy-based routing based on destination in PFSense now. Thank you for watching. As always, don't forget to click on the like and subscribe button below. And if you have comments, leave it in the comment section below. I will get to them as soon as possible. Take care and see you next time. Bye.